Wouldn't you agree that there's something so incredibly heartwarming about handcrafting a piece of love for that smallest member of our family? I wanted to use a yarn I already had in my yarn stash. It is Karen Cotton Ripple Cakes. I bought this one because I loved the painted colors on it. It is so pretty. The name of the colorway is Wildflowers. I decided not to overcomplicate anything and just use the recommended crochet hook that was on the yarn label itself. In this case, it was a G6 or four millimeter crochet hook. Then I grabbed my scissors and yarn needle and then I had everything ready to go. I have a lot of crochet pattern books. I just love them. They provide me with so much inspiration. Recently, I was playing with a pattern from the book Crochet 101 Stitches for Afghans that I really enjoyed. I thought that it was fun and fast, that it was easy, and that it would make a really great blanket project. Every single time I jump into a project without swatching it first, I run into some kind of issue. In this case, I have a very limited amount of yarn. I only have four skeins of this beautiful yarn to use. So I want to know right off the bat if I can even use it for one, and then if I can use it, how many stitches I will need to have in each row and how many rows I will be capable of making for a finished project. When making your swatch, it is super important that you use the same materials and tools to make the swatch that you intend to use to make the blanket. That way all of the dimensions and everything is on point. In this particular pattern, there is a multiple stitch count requirement. So I also need to take that into consideration. The multiple stitch count requirement for this pattern is a multiple of four plus two. Now that we've done everything for the swatch, we have an idea of how many stitches will be in each row, how many rows to make, and approximately how much yarn we will need to make the project. Now that I've figured out all of the information, I know that my blanket will be able to measure 40 inches wide by 50 inches tall. Now I'm ready to begin. Starting with a slip knot, insert your crochet hook, and we are ready to go. For this 40 by 50 inch baby blanket, begin by chaining 130 chains. If you are wanting to make a different size blanket, please refer to the pattern. For row one, we're gonna go ahead and make one double crochet stitch in the third chain from our crochet hook. The skipped two chains do count as your first double crochet stitch. Then continue making one double crochet stitch in every chain all the way across. You should end row one with a total of 129 stitches. For row two, we will begin by chaining two and then turning our work. This chain two does count as our first double crochet stitch and will take that first stitch space. You will then continue making one double crochet stitch in every stitch all the way across. At the end of row two, you wanna make sure you end with a total of 129 stitches. Your last double crochet stitch will be in that top chain of the chain two, because remember our chain twos do count as a double crochet stitch. To begin row three, we will begin by chaining two and turning our work. That chain two does count as our first double crochet stitch and we'll take that first stitch space. For row three, make one double crochet in the next three stitches. and then we will do a twist stitch. Let me show you how it's done. We're gonna start by yarning over and inserting our crochet hook from front to back of that post, and then yarn over and pull level. Then yarn over again, insert our crochet hook front to back, yarn over, pull level, and then yarn over, pull through the first four loops, then yarn over, pull through the last two loops. Double crochet in the next stitch. You will avoid the stitch space behind that post. Do not put any stitch in that stitch space. Make one double crochet in the next two stitch spaces for a total of three. The repeat pattern for row three is three double crochet stitches, then twist. Yarn over, insert crochet hook, yarn over, pull level, then yarn over, insert crochet hook, yarn over, pull level, yarn over, pull through the first four loops, then yarn over, pull through the last two loops for a twist stitch and three double crochet stitches. We will end row three by making four double crochet stitches. 
four, row four. We start by chaining two and then turning our work. The chain two still counts as a double crochet stitch and will take that first stitch space. Row four, all we're doing is making one double crochet stitch in every stitch all the way across. For every even number row, that's all we're doing is just one double crochet stitch in each stitch space all the way across. Ending row four with a total of 129 stitches. For row five, we begin by chaining two. We will make one double crochet stitch in the next stitch before making our first twist. Again, with the twist, we're gonna yarn over and insert a crochet hook from front to back, yarn over and pull level, then yarn over, insert front to back, yarn over, pull level, then yarn over, pull through four, yarn over, pull through two. Then make one double crochet stitch in the following three stitch spaces. Repeat this pattern of three double crochet, then twist stitch, three double crochet, twist stitch, all the way across for row five, ending row five with two double crochet stitches. It is row five that the twist stitch is offset from row three, so these twists are not aligned with each other, they're more of a zigzag. Ending row five by making a double crochet stitch in that top chain there, great! Look at how pretty that zigzag pattern looks. I love it. For row six, chain two and turn our work. Row six is just an even number row, which means one double crochet stitch in every stitch space all the way across. Remember that first chain two takes the first stitch space. Let's go ahead and look at the other side. Chain two, turn our work. Oh my gosh, look at all those twist stitches. So the repeat pattern for this project is just repeating rows three through row six. You're going to want to end on a row four or six pattern where there's just a clean one double crochet stitch in each stitch space to end the project. So I chose not to add a blanket border around my blanket and really let it be up to you what blanket border you would like to put around yours. If you would like some ideas, I do have a whole playlist on my YouTube channel dedicated to blanket borders and you can just go ahead and select which one you think would look best around your blanket. Let me know in the comment section below which one you chose. Crochet by the numbers. All right, so this project took me approximately 16 hours to complete. Four skeins of the Karen Cotton Ripple Cakes. Each skein of yarn cost $12.99 per skein. That means this blanket project cost me approximately $51.96. I absolutely adored this crochet stitch pattern. I hope you did too. Please let me know in the comment section below your thoughts of the twist and the pattern itself. Thank you so much for watching today and hanging out with me. I hope you have the best day and I'll see you with the next one. Bye guys.